WHBF is local for you. Now, here is your digital only look at Quad Cities News. This is Local 4 News Midday, only on ourquadcities.com. Hi everyone, I'm Alexandria Ikamoni. Thanks for joining us for Local 4 News Midday. Happening right now, day two of deliberation is happening for the Luke Andrews attempted murder trial. The jury couldn't reach a verdict after five hours yesterday. And getting up to speed, Luke Andrews defense team told the jury the 13 year old made a bad decision to get attention yesterday. His attorney argued Andrews behavior escalated in the week leading up to the incident. The defense called on the jury to find him not guilty on the attempted murder charge, but guilty of showing a dangerous weapon and having a gun on school grounds. Now, prosecutors say that argument doesn't have merit. This gets you attention. This plus this gets you murder. You don't need bullets to get attention. You need bullets to kill someone. Now, for more details on what happened in court yesterday, visit our quadcities.com's news tab, and we'll have a court update from today with Sh Local 4 Sean Logging starting at 4 on Local 4 News. We finally have some answers about what to cause the HESCO barriers to fail back in April. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers talked about it last night after a two-month investigation. Engineers met with city officials and inspected downtown Davenport on May 13th. And now they say the different factors cause the barriers to slide. Now the surveillance video was part of the Army Corps analysis and engineers say they looked at several cases exploring different ways the barriers could have been loaded. They say none of those cases resulted in failure and a system should have worked as expected when installed. They say it was all a series of unfortunate events. We don't think this possibly would have happened other than Things like rainfall, wet pavement, loss of sand in the HESCOs that reduced essentially the resisting force on, for the wall against the water. Due to some of those extenuating circumstances, the HESCO basket started to slide. And once it slid, it caught and it rolled. The Army Corps recommends seven things city officials can, can do to prevent this from happening again, including adding a second layer of barrier baskets to keep that wall from sliding. Now you can find all those recommendations on our news tab on ourquadcities.com. And if you see news happening, forward it to Local 4. Just download the Our Quad Cities app. It's available on Android and Apple devices, and it's free. You can get breaking news notifications and also share stories you want to see highlighted here on Local 4. Three presidential candidates are trying to prove why they deserve your vote. They made stops here in the Quad Cities yesterday. Your local election headquarters wa was there at the events, or the three events. Castro talked about his plans to make America the smartest, healthiest, fairest, and the most prosperous in the nation, and wants to reform education, health care, and the police system. Senator Kamala Harris touched on equal pay for women for equal work and was formally endorsed by Iowa S or State Representative Phyllis Thede. Then Senator Kristen Gillibrand promoted Medicare for All and to increase Social Security benefits. Here are a few highlights from each candidate. Ban assault rifles and large magazines. I will have a universal background check so that only people who should have access have access. As president, what I'm prepared to do is shift the burden to the corporation to prove that they're paying women equally for equal work. We're going to be a better America, a stronger America, if all of us, no matter what the color of our skin or our background or how long we've been in this country, work together to create that America. Now you can find more details on all of their visits. Visit our quadcities.com. Right now, the 150th Rock Island County Fair is taking over on the Illinois side of the river. And they're expecting a lot of exciting events to happen today and throughout the rest of the week. We're talking about carnival rides, livestock shows, and grandstand acts. Local 4 is Andrea Medina reports on one new attraction. Hey Alexandria, one thing that is new and I'm talking about less than 24 years old is this baby over here. Check it out. He was born yesterday at 502. So it's a boy. We have a little boy over here and I have fair manager Jen over here. So what can you tell us about him? Well, he was born <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> He's just a little young bull calf. Um, 
you know, obviously he's still pretty wobbly on his legs. He's, he's a newborn and we think that they should run and jump right away, but it takes them a couple days to get their legs under him and really get him moving around. But he's doing well and the mom's doing well. So I guess everything is good down here in the birthing center. Oh, good, good, good to hear that. And, and he is so fresh that he still has his umbilical cord. It's hard to see right now because he's laying down, but he's absolutely adorable. I, I want to take him home with me. <laughs> I think your little dachshund probably would not like that. She'd feel a little left out. Oh. And now, how common is it to have, you know, little calves born during the county fair? Well, it's rather unusual because most people don't bring their pregnant cows to the fair. Fortunately, we have a great fair board member who does have these dairy cattle very close by, and so he breeds them specifically to birth during the county fair so that people can see the actual process and see newborn calves. So it is a bit unusual, but we're fortunate that we have Jim. I want to be here just observing it. I mean, it's just so crazy to think that this little calf was born less than 24 hours ago, 502 exactly. Crazy, right? But Alexandra, I'm going to send it back to you. The fairgrounds open every day at 10 o'clock. Andrea, thank you. He's definitely adorable. And if you are heading out to the fair, you need to prepare for the weather that we're expecting. Now I'm talking about a lot of heat. Ash will tell you all about it in your local pinpoint forecast when we come back. WHPF is local for you. You're watching a special digital newscast on OurQuadCities.com with Alexandria Ikamoni and meteorologist Ash Simpson. This is Local 4 News Midday, available only on OurQuadCities.com. Good afternoon and welcome to Living Local. Here's what viewers are saying about Living Local. I can't tell you how happy I am with your new program, Living Local. I've told all my friends and more and more are tuning in to watch it. I watch Living Local every day and I just want to tell you that it's a great program. We watch it every day and they do a great job. Nobody is doing what you're doing around here. You should be proud. Find out what you're missing. Join Brittany Price and Ash Simpson weekdays at 2 on Living Local. And now, meteorologist Ash Simpson with your local pinpoint forecast. Well, we are looking at some extreme heat here over the next few days. Yesterday wasn't too bad. We had the cloud cover kept a little more mild, but it'll be anything from mild here on out. Wednesday evening today through Saturday evening, an excessive heat warning is in effect for heat index values getting into the 100s. That includes pretty much the entire area. We're up to 94 today, so we're not under the warning today. It'll feel like it's in the upper 90s, but Thursday and Friday feeling even warmer than that. So 105 likely our peak heat index on Thursday, 108 by Friday. That's dangerous stuff. You need to remember some safety tips. Air conditioning going to be your best friend. Stay hydrated if you're going to be out and about. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water. Don't overexert yourself either. So please take regular breaks inside. Light clothing, both in material and color. Make sure it's reflective so that the, the sunshine can reflect off of you. And then check the car. Please do not leave kids or pets in the car. It'll be extremely dangerous. Now, clear skies outside. You can see some showers trying to race through Iowa here today. If we got a little bit of rain, that would be a nice relief for us, but I think a lot of that going to kind of uh, shred apart before it gets here. So we should be looking at a dry day today. A few storms overnight tonight. <clears throat> Those should move through quickly and then we'll be left uh, with more sunshine Thursday, Friday with that south wind pushing us to those extreme levels. So here today, 94. Tonight we're down to 77 with some storms late tonight. There is a slight severe risk, so remain weather aware. We're back in the upper 90s Thursday, Friday. We'll stay in the 90s through Saturday before some rain this weekend cools us down for next week. You definitely don't want to play with the heat that's coming up for sure. Well, thank you for watching Local 4 News Midday. Your local news, weather, and sports are available 24 hours a day right here at ourquadcities.com. And be sure to join us for Local 4 News starting at 4. See you then. If you see news happen or have a story idea, remember to forward it to 4. You can send your photos, videos, or ideas to us on the Our Quad Cities app or on the Local 4 News Facebook page. See breaking news 24-7 on ourquadcities.com. watched local 4 news lately people in davenport took cover when they heard gunshots this afternoon local 4 news was first on the scene first on the scene first on the scene with more local stories than anyone else live in davenport in rock island in the newsroom grace runkle local 4 news 
breaking news. We were there when they took the suspected drug dealer down. It's a Local 4 news exclusive. And the fastest growing source of online news coverage. On air, but online. Isn't it time you made Local 4 news local for you?